Hi everyone! Today I'm going to share with you on how to design a mixed method research. And before this, I have recorded a video about data triangulation, which is quite a similar concept with mixed method research design. So I encourage you to go over to my channel and watch that video as well. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let us begin. The big idea of a mixed method research design is that <clears throat> it uses the combination of quantitative data and qualitative data. Although this idea is not exclusive, but in most of the mixed method research, it uses these two types of data. Now, when is mixed method research design suitable? Uh, basically, there are two kinds of uh, research objectives that can um, leads to the use of a mixed method a research design. That is, the first one is explanatory purpose. In another word, your research objective might be asking on how um, an intervention was effective or how a training program was effective in achieving its outcome. So explanatory purpose. The second one is confirmatory purpose. In another word, you want to obtain some kind of uh, confirmation about the effectiveness of the instrument and yet you don't want to rely on one um, assessment method or one measurement tool. So therefore, you can use mixed method research design. There are two parts to this mixed method research design video. In this part one, I will share with you design that helps to provide explanation. And in part two of this video, I will share with you design that helps to provide confirmation. All right, let's start off with this mixed method uh, research design that helps to provide um, explanation. Now, there are three steps involved. First is the intervention, or maybe um, it, depends on, it depends on the kind of research that you're embarking. Maybe it's a kind of a program um, for training, or it may be um, the use of certain tools, okay? But generally, I say I would call this as an intervention, okay? Step one, there must be an intervention. Step two, uh, there must be some kind of assessment or evaluation um, using some kind of a quantitative data. And step three is to provide an explanation of the effect of the intervention. And step three is usually involved the use of qualitative data. Now, before you think about using mixed method research design to provide explanation, um, there are two important considerations that you need to um, con take into account at the planning stage. Um, first consideration is when will the changes happen? Because that will help you to determine when you should measure the changes, the pre-test and the post-test, for example. And the second consideration is where do you want to capture the data? Do you want to capture the, capture the data in the process, after the process, or when? Now, this is just an, an, a pictorial uh, demonstration of the mixed method uh, research design that is for explanation purpose. Let's say the house is an intervention. So you can have pre-test and post-test. Before a person goes into the house, you pre-test him on certain uh, variables. After it went through the house, okay, that represents the intervention. There is a post-test, so you measure the variables as well. Now, there are two approaches. Um, to this scenario here in order to provide an explanation. The first one is what we call embedded mixed method design. In another word, we try to put in, like in this case, a spy eye, you know, you put in um, some hidden cameras in the house to monitor the movement of this uh, person um, in order to capture the episodes of changes or even to measure the changes um, in the house, right? So that's what we call embedded. In another word, you embed your measurement tools or your data collection tools within the intervention itself. The other one is called sequential. In another word, after this person has gone through the intervention, uh, after the post-test, you probably uh, interview him of what happened in the house. Okay, so that's why sequential. It, it, it is a sequence, quantitative, then qualitative. Now, here are some examples of embedded mixed method design. Um, let's talk about training program. Right, you can have pre-test and post-test, which is usually um, th that's the case, okay? Pre-test and post-test. But of course, um, you need to determine what kind of variables you want to measure. Then um, the other component that is very important, since it's embedded, you have to think about 
during the training, how are you going to embed some kind of uh, data collection tools in the training itself? So there, these are just some suggestions. It could be records of some activities being carried out during the training or reflections written by the trainees during the training or if you can do this, uh, some video recording of the training process, okay? Um, so all this will be able to provide you with, with uh, useful data as to what happened during that training, okay? That you can use it to help you to interpret, to understand the changes in the pre-test and post-test. The other one is interventional tools, maybe. Um, this is, for example, in the case of uh, ed um, education, you want to implement certain education tools and you want to measure, for example, um, students' level of engagement or students' motivational beliefs. Then obviously you can have pre-test and post-test before you use the tool, after you use the tool, and during the period of usage or learning. So you have to think of, is there any um, data collection tools that you can actually embed into the process itself, right? Um, in education, you have very powerful tools, uh, learning analytics that can generate all sorts of data that probably probably can actually help you to provide an explanation of why um, the variables actually change. Uh, another one is probably you can ask the students to write uh, diaries or journals um, during this uh, period of uh, usage in order to capture some of their learning experiences, which might be uh, helpful um, for you to interpret the changes, to understand the changes in the variables, or maybe a regular interview. So uh, sometimes in certain medical uh, sciences research, when they want to know the effectiveness of certain interventions or certain medicines, they may um, uh, interview the, uh, the candidates or the, the participants in different intervals in order to understand, to un understand the process or the experiences they are going through. Okay, all these are useful. Now, these are just some examples um, that I can share with you based on my own experience and my own knowledge. Now, the embedded uh, mixed method design, there are two uh, key elements in designing this sort of uh, research. Number one is at the planning stage, very, very important. I emphasize it's very, very important. At the planning stage, you need to determine the most suitable and practical ways to gather the qualitative data, especially if you're using the uh, embedded uh, with research design where you want to really monitor the changes of variables during the process itself. Okay, this requires some thoughts here at the planning stage. And uh, when it comes to the qualitative data analysis, um, you need to use some kind of theory to analyze and to understand, to provide explanation. But having said that, um, from my own experience, sometimes after I use the theory, I interpret it I found that hey, there are some new things emerge from the uh, emerge actually from the uh, qualitative data. So I would encourage um, if you're using this kind of uh, research methodology, first round you use deductive data analysis. Uh, I have done a video on deductive data analysis. Please head over to my channel to watch that video. Okay, deductive data analysis. After you run through it first round, then I'll encourage you to go through the second round using inductive data analysis. In other words, you just immerse yourself in the data and try to find new terms or new uh, codes and new meaning. Okay, next is the sequential mixed method design. Now, sequence, sequential mixed method design, basically, it's actually follow the sequence. Quantitative first, then qualitative. So what happened was, after you've got the data, the quantitative data, which I call probably the first stage, um, you analyze the data and then from the data itself, you formulate interview questions that you want to use in qualitative stage, where you will probably carry out some interviews with the participants in order to provide an understanding of why the changes happen. Okay, uh, you might want to focus on their experience, their feeling, the process, um, while they were uh, going through the intervention. So that's why it's called sequential. Quantitative first, then qualitative. Now, the main contribution from mixed method research design that provides explanation is um, the explanation that you get can help 
to improve not just probably the design of the intervention, you can, you can improve that, right? or you can use it to refine some theories. Um, this is what I mentioned just now about deductive data analysis and inductive data analysis. Okay, You can refine the theories. It, probably the theory says students are engaged because of certain factors, but from your data analysis, you might find out that actually students are engaged because maybe the type of words um, being used on the, on the interface of the software, or maybe in terms of the colors they use, or maybe the sound uh, that the software has, okay? All this can actually help you to refine the theories, okay? Um, the explanation can also help you to, Im to improve the practices or policies. These are particularly useful for the practitioners. So my encouragement to everyone who is going to carry out this sort of um, uh, research is that don't stop at the explanation. The explanation is very, very uh, valuable. Think about who can use this explanation to help them in their work. So the explanation is the contribution. So the takeaway from today's session is that uh, I hope all of you get this idea at the planning stage, which is very important, focus on the um, planning stage or the designing stage. You need to decide when and how to collect the qualitative data. Um, in this method here, quantitative data usually is not an issue. The pre-test and post-test uh, usually is very straightforward. But the challenging part is when do you want to collect the qualitative data and how to collect it, especially if you are um, thinking of using embedded mixed method research. All right, so that's all I have for all of you in this part one. I'll see you in part two. Bye. Bye.